R microcontroller and embedded system module 5 session 7 uh, in the previous session we had discussed a uh, few of the issues which arises in uh, uh, the while communicating two processes between uh, and uh, the the method was known as task uh, synchronization issues now we will try to figure out the solution to avoid those issues uh, some of the issues which were uh, mainly dealt in the previous sessions happens to be racing and the deadlock uh, racing is a situation wherein um, uh, two multiple processes tries to um, um, use a resource simultaneously and uh, in that case there is a chance that um, data uh, inconsistency might happen and uh, this can be minimized it can be reduced with the help of mm, synchronization techniques so today's session we will talk about the synchronization techniques okay and so so this is what you have so to avoid when would be used this kind of a techniques it's uh, meant for uh, avoiding the conflicts in the resource uh, access that is the case uh, when you have a racing and you have a deadlock starvation and live lock are uh, the concepts again uh, um, uh, task synchronization issue concepts now which are not defined in your uh, or addressed in your syllabus uh, and uh, the second um, um, scenario where uh, uh, this technique would be helpful in your um, process communication would be uh, when you have a producer consumer problem so what is producer consumer problem I have taken one example real world example wherein uh, uh, the shared memory happens to be a notice board uh, and uh, you had a producer could be a higher authorities who wants to convey some message or information to the uh, students uh, in an institute so the producer happens to be the higher authorities they happens to be a one process who would use or who would write some information in it and the students um, at this point would uh, just be uh, able to just gather the information they cannot alter the the memory cannot be uh, modified or notice board uh, is not meant for them to alter it is meant for them to just read so that's the scenario uh, of uh, producer and consumer so consumer happens to be the students now so one more uh, example we can consider uh, to some extent computer science um, uh, related example wherein you have a buffer uh, shared buffer or a shared memory which needs to be uh, accessed by two processes uh, so one process uh, before it um, um, uses the buffer uh, so the job of this producer or uh, the write process which uh, we talk about uh, is to ensure that whether the buffer is full or not if the buffer is full then it should not write so if it's having if it's not full then it then only it should write similarly the consumer on the uh, other hand the consumer process uh, has to look at whether the buffer is empty or not if it's not empty then only it has to read so these are certain exceptions uh, which needs to be uh, added when you're designing uh, this kind of a, a synchronization technique so this is also something like in in case to ensure that uh, for uh, uh, proper sequence of uh, operation um, then uh, you need to uh, you will be using this task synchronization technique okay and the third one anyway is uh, when you are trying to communicate between processes you can uh, try to use this uh, technique again so uh, in general let's talk about uh, um, a critical section what is critical section so critical section already we had uh, come across a shared memory concept uh, memory which will be shared by two processes simultaneously so this is known as critical section okay i repeat a critical section happens to be a region in your code memory uh, it's a piece of code um, uh, which has to be shared by multiple processes more than one processes tries to use this resource and uh, you call this as critical section and uh, right now we will be focusing only on this critical section so if uh, process 1 is uh, in the critical section so what about process 2 would process 2 uh, would it jump into the uh, critical section uh, simultaneously when uh, process 1 is accessing so those are some of the uh, problems which we need to handle uh, using task synchronization technique okay and um, this point uh, we will talk about a concept which is addressed in your syllabus uh, 
for uh, task synchronization technique which happens to be um, one is binary semaphore method and uh, one more is um, uh, the count uh, counting semaphore now these are the two techniques used for uh, mm, you know handling uh, the uh, task synchronization so now task synchronization before that some terms mutual exclusion so what is uh, mutual me exclusion mechanism mutual uh, exclusion mechanism is a concept wherein if one process is there in the critical section when we talk about two processes when you have already one process in the critical section then second process cannot uh, access that critical section so there you have to use some programming uh, method to ensure that for the process two it is actually a blocked state okay so out of which we will talk about this mechanism which is uh, sleep and wake up so what is sleep sleep is something like if uh, the process 2 assume process 1 is there in the critical section and process 2 wants to use that critical section so what is critical section critical section happens to be a shared memory which could be shared between the two processes if we are talking about two processes so now sleep implies if the process is in the critical section process 1 is in the critical section and process 2 wants to use the critical section then uh, when it enters the critical section it will not enter the critical section then it, it will check some uh, it will uh, go with some conditions there are some conditions uh, which has to be satisfied then only it can enter the critical section so if uh, if uh, uh, you figure out that uh, you know critical section is already occupied by one process then it has to sleep so the prof for the process too it will be in the block state or you call it as a sleep state so it can uh, it can which of uh, the its resource the services could be shut down temporarily and it can go to the sleep mode and uh, now uh, when it gets wake up so the process one which was there in the critical section when it voluntarily comes out of the process uh, comes out of the uh, resource saying that it has completed its task it has uh, used the resource and once it um, uh, uh, terminates the resource comes out of the critical section then it uh, will give wake up to the process 2 so process 2 would be woken up by the process 1 which is there in the critical section so in this case process 1 is going to enable the process 2 that's wake up so in this case directly process 2 will not go into the critical section it has to just uh, wake the process to and later again it has to undergo the stage something like it has to check whether the critical section is uh, empty or uh, some other processors are uh, using or not that uh, has to be um, uh, again uh, done by the process too okay uh, now um, um, so that's um, the, your uh, sleep and uh, wake up so we will discuss under sleep and uh, wake up uh, methodology you have uh, binary semaphore and counting semaphore so before we begin with uh, binary uh, semaphore and uh, counting semaphore we will talk about what is a semaphore so hope this concept was clear so I'll just repeat sleep and wake up uh, mechanism so in sleep and wake up mechanism when a process is not allowed to access the critical session which is currently being locked by another process okay so process 2 is not allowed uh, it is being locked by process 1 then the process 2 goes to sleep mode and it enters the block state now the process which is blocked on waiting for access to the critical section is awakened by the process which is currently own the critical section which means the process one which is there in the critical section when it says that it has completed the task in the critical section and it terminates when it comes out of the critical section then it will give a wake up call to the process two so that the process two uh, can uh, again um, start the uh, access to the critical region so that's about uh, sleep and wake up mechanism that's your mutual exclusive uh, mechanism uh, now semaphore let's talk about what is the semaphore so semaphore it could be an integer object so we have addressed it is a system resource literally it will be an integer object okay and this object would be used to um, uh, you know minimize if uh, at all there is any task synchronization issues if two processes are uh, trying to 
own or use a particular uh, shared memory then this object this system resource is going to uh, you know handle those two processes it will ensure that this source uh, will ensure that at any cost uh, it will uh, you know process one and process two for both processes the uh, the resource is given properly in a correct manner and also it will ensure that there is no data inconsistency as such so example for um, uh, the uh, you know um, the resources uh, uh, which are shared among a process can be uh, either exclusive use uh, can be either for exclusive use by a process or uh, for using a number of processes at, at a time so exclusively used by a process could be when when we are talk, talking about uh, one process utilizing a resource exclusively and uh, one more method is um, when a number of processes uses to share the memory at a time okay so both these scenarios could be handled with the help of this resource uh, called as semaphores so binary semaphore is a concept wherein we will uh, ensure that um, the resource is exclusively meant for one process at that case another process cannot use it directly it has to wait and uh, uh, countable process uh, or countable uh, uh, semaphore is another concept wherein multiple process uh, can access uh, same uh, memory or shared memory simultaneously it is possible okay and uh, example for um, a binary semaphore in this case we can consider a display device which is a monitor fitted or interface to an embedded system assume that embedded system is a process so one process is connected to uh, one shared resource which is a display device in that case uh, other other systems or other processes cannot use this display device it is meant exclusively for the process one which is your embedded system similarly one more scenario wherein multiple processes uh, accesses uh, shared memory so you can consider a hard disk with the uh, c drive d drive e drive and f drive and you might have multiple programs which might access a uh, information probably from uh, C drive D drive uh, E drive parallelly so that's possible that's doable so multiple process can access the hard disk simultaneously but it will not be at the same region it would be in different regions okay and uh, now let's concentrate on binary semaphore and counting semaphore so we will talk about the counting semaphore first okay in counting semaphore you will be having an integer object you will be having an integer object and that integer object literally would also take a value from minus infinity to plus infinity we will see what this number is how to change that number what happens if it has changed and uh, uh, this is important some some of our object is decremented by one when a process thread acquires it when uh, the the process uses the uh, resource then you are going to decrement it by uh, one and this count uh, semaphore uh, object count is incremented by one when uh, the process releases the uh, um, the shared memory okay uh, and uh, uh, to address more about this let's take one example okay so this is uh, your uh, semaphore object named s hope this program is clear and let's talk about this concept now so let's assume that there are three processes p1 p2 and p3 and uh, each process if it has to access this critical section critical section is your shared memory uh, it has to run the entry code and it also has to uh, uh, run the exit code when entry code will be executed so entry code will be executed when the process wants to enter this critical section after uh, using this critical section if it wants to release the critical section resource then it has to run the exit code okay i repeat entry code will be run when you are entering the critical section after uh, accessing the information present in the critical section if a process needs to exit then it has to undergo the exit code exit code should also be executed okay and uh, both code will use a common object known as a semaphore which is s okay now let's assume there are three processes 
namely p1 p2 and p3 and time being we will set the semaphore object integer value as 3 okay let the value of s be 3 okay and this is the code which you have for down and down implies entry code and up implies it is your exit code okay down means reduce up means increase so now count value s value count variable is 3 and uh, three processes we have p1 p2 p3 so initially uh, s value when this executes uh, now assume process 1 uh, wants this critical section so in that case it has to uh, run this entry code so what is the entry code for process 1 this is down so this down piece of code will be executed so p1 if it reaches or wants to reach here so first what happens is s value becomes s value minus 1 now we have assumed s value as um, uh, 3 so this does s becomes 2 s becomes 2 and we check uh, is s dot value less than value or s value is s value less than 0 now the situation is 2 and it is not less than 0 so this is con uh, this condition is false so this condition becomes true uh, to indicate that uh, right now the critical section is busy it's uh, you have to wait okay uh, and uh, right now since uh, this is uh, false uh, because the value of s is 2 now earlier it was 3 made 2 because process 1 is going to access this critical section and now return return means it goes to the critical section okay it goes to the critical section because nothing is there you don't have anything so uh, count value was 3 so p1 is in the critical section now now let's assume that p2 again uh, requires want to access the critical section now let us see whether uh, this mechanism allows it to go into the critical section or not now uh, as soon as uh, it is uh, 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 it wants to access the critical section p2 uh, becomes um, uh, you know uh, s value is same value same variable so s value becomes now 2 minus 1 it becomes 1 and uh, check the condition s says uh, value is uh, less than 0 no it is 1 which is greater than 0 so this is false which means it returns so it also returns into the uh, critical section now you have process 1 and process 2 both are there in critical section and it is accessing this region okay now let's assume for, uh, process 3 again wants to access this critical region so now uh, in this case again it will uh, go to the down because this has to be executed so you have s value is equal to s value minus 1 now this becomes uh, this is 2 it was 1 so now it is it becomes 1 minus 1 so it is 0 now s value is 0 and uh, that will become 0 is not less than 0 uh, so this return so uh, process 3 is also enter okay so three processes are there in this critical section and it is working independently let us assume okay now um, say that one more process you have process 4 so now process 4 when it comes uh, so right now the value of s value is 0 so this becomes when it wants to go into critical section now again it performs this so if s value less than 0 now 0 minus 1 becomes negative 1 so this condition is true this condition is true negative 1 is less than 0 so put process so put all the information present in this process on to the uh, um, a process control block pcb stands for process control block and uh, suspend this suspend this or make this process sleep okay you are saying that you block this process now uh, saying that uh, already in the critical section there are multiple number of processes uh, held and uh, you have to uh, ensure that those processes comes out of the critical section then only you can uh, move into the critical section so critical section is completely locked now so this is actually the uh, uh, code which will be executed now now what happens uh, to the critical section uh, I mean s value s value is negative 1 right now okay uh, uh, um, yeah negative 1 now say that uh, at this moment uh, um, what happens if uh, the process one wants to uh, leave okay process one can leave this so to exit uh, this uh, critical section it has to execute the exit section now what is the value of um, uh, uh, count now now process for process four you don't have a privilege uh, so count value s value uh, value was uh, negative one so exit section which means up program this will be executed so s value becomes s value plus one so uh, s value plus 1 uh, becomes now negative 1 plus 1 
uh, it becomes zero so it is equal so select the process from the system uh, suspended list right so don't you have a process p4 which is there in the uh, suspended list so it is in the block state wake that uh, list make that uh, process saying that you can access this critical section okay it will be the scenario only if process one comes out of this cross uh, this section then only uh, process uh, four can access this critical section okay so now this means wake up the process four and uh, later uh, it directly doesn't enter the critical section now it goes uh, to the down function now process uh, down the uh, after executing this uh, now the value of uh, uh, semaphore is uh, 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 its uh, uh, value was incremented it was zero it was zero and uh, when you are here it will uh, process okay so we can just figure out what happens uh, for uh, process 3 i think uh, access will be granted because uh, uh, that count count is equal to 3 which we have taken semaphore value as 3 that was actually the uh, information which will talk about how many number of uh, processes simultaneously can access the critical section okay uh, so when the value of uh, uh, semaphore value is equal to 0 implies it is um, you don't have uh, uh, the, almost all the um, elements uh, in this critical sections are uh, not I mean you can you can access that's what it says if it's not 0 uh, then it will be uh, I mean when it is 0 then it is in the blocking state So S value is equal to um, maximum or in this case if S value is equal to 3 it implies uh, uh, all processes that is all uh, the maximum uh, capacity uh, of total number of process which can be go into the critical section uh, that's what it says so if it's uh, equal to 3 3 processes that's the maximum uh, um, um, available process which can access the critical section at max so if it's lower than that then uh, less number of processes are there at max it is three so that's about uh, um, you know countable semaphores now uh, with respect to this figure let's talk about um, mutual exclusion uh, counting semaphore so let's assume that you your process a wants to access this shared memory and uh, this memory uh, assume this is a dormitory you know what is dormitory a big room with the um, multiple number of beds added in it now let's assume that there are three beds three beds and all these beds are filled which means three processes are already using those uh, three uh, beds so each uh, time you require a bed then uh, you have to go to the dormitory uh, caretaker and it, he will provide you the key right now uh, for the room you have three keys implies there will be three beds so if there are no keys available for this particular room implies that uh, all this uh, uh, beds are occupied and uh, if a process A wants this uh, feature available then at any cost the person who are there in the bag voluntarily they have to uh, realize they have to come out they have to vacate the room uh, and they have to give the um, key back to the uh, dormitory uh, a caretaker and uh, and uh, they have to uh, press the uh, warnings uh, I mean uh, wake up uh, signal wake up signal uh, would be given by them uh, to indicate uh, if uh, there are any processes in the sleep state they can uh, get a wake up call and they can uh, go back to the dormitory caretaker and they can uh, try to access the room if uh, available okay so that's what uh, the scenario talks about already it was explained uh, by using the program now, this is a, a, a representation analogous representation uh, wherein we have considered mm, uh, you know um, room uh, hotel uh, room management and uh, next next uh, talk about uh, we will talk about binary semaphore the key difference between binary semaphore and uh, um, your um, counting semaphore is in binary semaphore uh, uh, probably if we consider this concept uh, room and um, uh, process or uh, person uh, 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 concept then uh, one person can uh, uh, use one room uh, 
previous case three persons were uh, sharing a uh, one room right now uh, a room is having only one bed okay let's assume that our memory is uh, one single bed uh, one process one person can use it so it's actually uh, something a uh, process wherein if uh, one process is a uh, process is using a memory uh, then uh, another process cannot use it hence the name binary semaphore in this case your semaphore value integer object cannot take any other values only two values it will take either it will be zero or it will be one so these are the only two uh, possible values which your semaphore uh, would take in this case and uh, literally if um, the one process uh, if it's uh, there in the critical section then uh, it has to voluntarily uh, release uh, that uh, uh, source or resource so that uh, other process uh, if it wants you it can use okay so that's one difference uh, between the binary semaphore and uh, counting semaphore now if we look at uh, the program uh, scenario so again and the same uh, way as you had it for uh, counting semaphore for binary semaphore you have a program for down and you have a program for up up is for weight i mean up is for release and down is for weight okay uh, so uh, entry code will be uh, this code and exit code will be this code so this is your critical section now let's assume uh, can we take any value s value can be considered as 0 or 1 let us assume whether it takes s is equal to 0 or s is equal to 1 what should be the value which needs to be uh, initialized for uh, making binary semaphore 1 uh, uh, working okay so suppose if we consider the semaphore value as uh, 0 uh, uh, then uh, you have s is equal to 0 semaphore is equal to 0 so it will check whether the uh, semaphore value is equal to 1 it's not equal to 1 so uh, suppose assume process 1 has to uh, go to this critical section so you have two processes process 1 and process 2 process 1 has to enter the critical section so in that case the entry code has to be executed and the entry code is this down program so now we have assumed s is equal to 0 in that case if s value is equal to 1 then do this if not do this now s value is equal to 0 so this uh, task will be or this piece of code will be executed so it means block this process so process one even though we say that none of the process e has occupied this critical section we are saying that we are trying to block the process one which is not correct because process one can go to this critical section and it can access this information uh, whereas now you're getting this this uh, which means block the process and uh, make it in sleep mode this is not correct so uh, always remember for binary semaphore the semaphore value should be initialized to one first okay so if s is equal to 1 now let's see where can p1 access this critical section when s is equal to 1 okay if we initialize s is equal to 1 then entry code process 1 if it has to access this critical section entry code it has to run so entry code is this down program so here you check s value is equal to 1 yes it is 1 so make the value of s as 0 so s becomes 0 okay and uh, in this case uh, normal it is if s is equal to 0 if this condition is occupied then you will be going to critical section that's what it means so if suppose if you are uh, uh, performing this else condition then uh, the process uh, 1 or processes will not go to the critical section it has to sleep right now it will not be sleeping uh, it will go to the critical section uh, which means process 1 is there in the critical section now okay now let's say that process 1 remains in the critical section and process 2 wants to go to the critical section now what what happens so in this case process 2 since it has to use this critical section it goes to the entry code now the, in the entry code we have set the value of s is equal to 0 um, because this was uh, the uh, a condition which was a uh, you know a true there so now since s value is equal to zero it checks this condition s value is not equal to one so it goes to else condition so it will block for process two it will say that process one is using the critical section process two cannot simultaneously use the section so this way it will handle and it will ensure that uh, you know this would uh, uh, it will give the uh, privilege to process one so process two will be blocked and it will be in the sleep state now suppose if um, process one uh, has to come out of the mm, critical section it has to uh, go to the exit program so in the exit program now the value of uh, 
uh, s value is equal to 0 so go to the uh, exit section so here it will uh, do this semaphore if suspended list so if suspended list is equal to empty s value is equal to 1 so uh, this condition suspended list when we look at suspended list is not empty it has a value okay so so what it does this will not be executed okay so suspended list is not empty so it else statement will be executed so it will wake up process 2 now because process 1 has come out of the critical section process 2 can access now so it will wake up the process 2 so process 2 next time can try to access this critical section so this way uh, binary semaphore works hope uh, the program made a point now this is a scenario this is uh, uh, you know a room um, and this room has to be used by process A. Now assume process B is already there in this room. So uh, the uh, uh, room or a receptionist, whoever is uh, monitoring all this uh, information, they will be having this key and this key uh, for this particular room will not be available implies room uh, key is not available which means he has to wait. Uh, he will be in sleep mode and uh, whenever uh, you know this uh, room key uh, whenever this guy uh, vacates the room he will give the room back uh, room key back to the receptionist and the reception will a uh, receptionist uh, will collect uh, uh, the key at that time so this uh, process b would uh, give a wake up call to the process a saying that it has vacated and process uh, a can uh, uh, activate himself now um, and uh, he can uh, go back to the receptionist and he can get that uh, uh, you know key and uh, he can use this room so that's how uh, your binary semaphore works hope uh, this is okay and uh, the last topic uh, for this uh, concept is how to select a, a real-time operating system so real-time operating system when you are dealing you have a functional requirement and non-functional requirement functional requirement first uh, is processor support so when you are dealing with a particular real-time operating system uh, no matter how good uh, uh, the way you design your real-time operating system if the processor is not of that high end uh, definitely there might be a problem when you are when you want to design a particular application using your operating system uh, for your embedded system okay if the embedded product if the hardware components are not that uh, capable enough to drive a particular application then definitely it doesn't make sense so uh, selecting a processor means a lot so you have to select a processor uh, very good uh, hardware uh, components resources should be used made use so uh, for for uh, selecting a, a real-time operating system also okay or else sometimes it will uh, it, it if the processor uh, speed is not that great then definitely uh, no matter whatever you design how good uh, operating system you design no problem but uh, latency might be um, very high so in that case uh, it doesn't make sense because uh, the the system which you design um, particularly for uh, real time application has to uh, work very quickly the memory requirement so so for for designing your operating system literally operating system will be stored in your rom and uh, 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 when when you require some services from that operating system to be given for uh, running some application then that uh, application that services will be loaded in the ram so both rom rom and ram both are required for uh, uh, proper functioning of uh, your operating system real-time capability as said uh, for since we are talking about real-time operating system the latency is one factor which we need to consider and uh, whatever the operating system you design uh, ensure that uh, uh, for multiple uh, interrupts for multiple interrupts it tries to provide the interrupt service routine uh, within a fraction of seconds so the kernel kernel happens to be the uh, brain of your operating system uh, kernel uh, provides the basic services for uh, uh, enabling some, uh, some applications for uh, uh, providing some interrupts uh, uh, service routines so this two factors uh, should also be interrupt latency is uh, the the how quickly uh, your uh, your uh, kernel or your operating system is to provide the service for your interrupts which has enabled your embedded system okay so this selection should also be uh, this selection in the sense uh, it uh, ultimately results to 
the hardware the hardware which we are which you are using should also uh, be very much good um, then the inter-process communication features and task synchronization features we have talked about inter-process communication uh, feature and task synchronization uh, features uh, which are uh, very much needed for real-time operating system so even this point has to be made in point uh, if we want to select the R2 system so this features should be made visible should be made accessible should be uh, should be given uh, to this uh, R2s modularization support implies uh, the way in which a huge application has been divided into uh, modules and uh, modules uh, uh, work uh, independently so that uh, uh, if something uh, happens for the uh, whole system you do not have to uh, scratch your head uh, looking for the error in the complete code rather if uh, you use uh, a modular uh, method then you can go to the modular module each module program you can uh, go and you can uh, look where the, the bug has occurred and you can correct that bug Okay, then also uh, while designing R2s, uh, ensure that you provide the necessary support for networking and communication. Mm, so if uh, one system has to communicate with another system over a LAN, over a Ethernet, so add those features. Uh, ensure that feature is made available. It may not use but provide those services if uh, you are designing a very good operating system. And also the programming language uh, uh, which uh, you will be using for designing an operating system is also very much uh, um, you um, um, it should be uh, you know uh, good like probably you can uh, mix up uh, uh, sometimes assembly code along with assembly code you can use C program or high level languages could also be made used for developing your uh, operating system and uh, non-functional law requirements happens to be the custom developed or off the shelf so custom developed is actually designing operating system from scratch uh, without using uh, the operating system which has been already uh, built by some other uh, developers so off the shelf uh, uh, is a scenario wherein you will be using operating system uh, provided by other developers um, majority like 90% of uh, the features from that uh, operating system you take and some modification you do it to uh, uh, get your operating system okay and uh, cost is uh, a factor which uh, is uh, very critical so when you design um, uh, how to ensure that uh, it is profitable uh, because you 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 um, you invest a lot for uh, uh, you know uh, developing the products uh, developing the service uh, development cost uh, so those by considering that so you have to ensure that uh, you know many customers uh, purchases your product okay and uh, uh, development and debugging tools so uh, in this case um, uh, debugging tool and development so for example uh, arm uh, microcontroller uh, has an operating system which we haven't used without operating system mode itself we had used uh, but uh, uh, keel and embed operating systems uh, uh, keel and uh, embedding operating systems they do use um, um, uh, arm definitely along with that there is atmel studio one more uh, a development platform used for running a arm uh, program so a uh, main uh, point here is to uh, operating system may be uh, very much good enough but if that doesn't support for some of the platform if if you don't have a, a proper uh, you know suitable debugging tool for your particular operating system then it is of no use your operating system may give you the best response best performance um, as per as your requirement but if there are no development uh, uh, tools uh, which would be used for accessing your uh, resources then it is of no use for example uh, as addressed arm uh, has keel uh, embed development uh, ides atmel uh, ides if there was only one ides then it would have been a problem so ensure that when uh, de developing operating system it will uh, uh, suit for multiple uh, development platforms now uh, ease of use so the 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 way the operating system uh, should look uh, after you develop should be uh, like it should be user friendly the the customers whoever uses it should uh, uh, for them it uh, should be very much easy to use 
it should not be like uh, you know they type the commands and uh, run some application uh, uh, try to provide a gui pro uh, support as much as possible finally after sale after sale uh, in the sense uh, once the product has been sold um, ensure that you uh, maintain a good uh, bonding uh, with uh, your customers uh, uh, pro probably uh, customer service uh, related to customer service and also uh, time to time update updation of operating system they purchase operating system and uh, if you figure out that as uh, some additional services are been have been added up uh, or if it's been introduced in your uh, market then you could uh, uh, also provide this uh, or you can add this service to the uh, customers who have already purchased your uh, uh, you know operating system like in in kind of a patch kind of a patch you can provide so they can update operating system whenever they require so all this are uh, some of the factors uh, functional requirements and also non-functional requirements fine